Hi. In this video series, we're going to start a new book, Seven Powers, The Foundations of Business Strategy by Hamilton Helmer. I was always curious about how businesses create their strategies and how they form them and what are the principles behind an effective strategy. Some questions that can help us understand why Nokia, which was so successful up until 2010 or 11, even 12, uh, and became almost obsolete in 2014 and 15 against Apple. And what caused that? What were the decisions that were made by Apple? What were the decisions that Nokia, which was a powerhouse in 20, 2008, 2009, and 10, and what led to its demise, right? Um, so I think the answer to that problem is strategy. What strategy Apple uh, and Steve Jobs enabled uh, the company to rally, and what strategies Nokia failed? Same for Vanguard versus Fidelity. Like when Fidelity was uh, the powerhouse in terms of assets under management, um, Vanguard was nothing. But now we see the clear difference in how big Vanguard is. So what, what changed? What was the strategy, right? So this book hopefully will help us understand all of that. Same example applies for the cloud, right? We see Amazon, which took the leader, uh, which uh, Microsoft is uh, the second in the line and um, aggressively, uh, has a huge strategy around cloud and Google, like what will be the future? Who will make the right decision? Hopefully by learning this book, I want to understand uh, what are the principles that these leaders are look looking into uh, before they make a decision as to what to do, how to pivot, what business to get in, what decisions to prioritize and what not to prioritize. Again, all of that comes part of strategy. So let's get into it. So the introduction covers um, the key aspects of an overview. Um, but again, the focus is again on leaders, right? If we make the right decision, each of these leaders are at the uh, helm of this decision making, be it Satya Nadella at Microsoft, uh, be it Steve Jobs at Apple, right? If they're flexible to adapt their strategy, if, if Satya would have stuck to just Windows, Windows, and Windows, uh, then you know the cloud uh, rally and the entire ecosystem of uh, products and services would not have been built, right? So emerging circumstances would require us leaders to be flexible and adapt our strategy. And so being flexible, being aware of these principles, the seven key powers of strategy is important so that we can make the right decisions and pivot. So let's get into it. Um, so I hope that this book helps us uh, uh, with that flexibility so that we can be aware of this content of strategy and what it means. And especially when we are in that high flux uh, information decision-making process that we are making the right decisions. So to define strategy, the study of fundamental determinants of potential business value, right? That is strategy uh, with a capital S. And uh, what does this mean? So what, where does value exist in the future? Can we see that? What is the business value? Where is the business value? Like pivoting to cloud was a key strategic decision. So now the business value was seen with an online uh, world. And so that was a key fundamental determinant that shifted Microsoft towards cloud in a big way. And a strategy with a small s is a route to continuing power in significant markets. Basically, it is the value that once it has been identified, how can that be translated into a series of steps that enable us to get that value, right? So that is the route to power in significant markets. So basically that value, that vision has to be then broken down into a series of execution steps or a series of plan on a strategic plan, which says how each of these significant markets can actually be uh, penetrated. So that is the small strategy, uh, strategy with a small s and bigger strategy, right? And so what is power, right? So this book is seven powers, right? Uh, power set of conditions and circumstances um, that create the potential for persistent differentiated results, right? So basically there are two things. Um, there is uh, benefits and barriers, right? So if there is a benefit, then you have increased cash flows, right? So if a company like Intel, they have strong power when it comes to against competing against AMD, right? Uh, we will see in the next video around Netflix, right as to how they had huge power to continue cash flow with the online subscribers because they bet on the internet right uh, and then the second is the barrier 
So power consists of two things, benefits and barrier. Benefits increase cash flows, barriers is decrease in competition. Uh, so a barrier is basically a moat, like what causes the competition to not get into your business and just take away your business. For example, Google Plus, when they tried to attack Facebook, there was a huge, they had huge cash. So they, they had deep pockets, but they still were not successful. So we'll cover that hopefully in the next set of videos as well. So power is basically Facebook was powerful at that time and you know it had huge cash flows in themselves, but also the competition or the barrier to entry was huge for Google to hit in. So that is, comp that is uh, power, we talked about strategy. And so there are two aspects of strategy, statics and dynamics. Like once, dynamics is the route to power that we talked about, right? How do you get to becoming powerful? And statics is staying powerful. Once you are at scale, how do you stay powerful? Right, like for example, Intel. How on earth are they not, uh, you know, being competed by AMD? That's a question that I have, that I hope to uncover from reading this book. But also, like, how did Netflix or you know get so powerful when Blockbuster was so big? Right? Why and how did they build those competitive modes so that they could uh, actually get from dynamic set of actions to the static powerhouse that they are today? So there are two aspects, statics and dynamics. The first seven powers that are described are the seven powers of statics, which is once you are powerful, how do you stay powerful? And there's also some aspects of dynamics, which is a set of actions that help them to get to being powerful. There are also many other areas that we will look at that comes uh, very handy when it comes to uh, strategy. It's like the persistence of the business, like are the business uh, leaders persisting even in, in case of uh, big competition, right? It's not going to be an easy job. So the people that are involved, like uh, uh, with Intel Operational Excellence with, with Andy Grove was a huge persistence that they had, right? It's a huge power that they have. Um, and there's also benefits and barrier that we talked about, right? Uh, what increase, what industry you're in, this industry economics what benefits and cash flows you see that uh, that industry is already having a tailwind behind you um, and what are the barriers like what are the uh, issues with getting into that market so industry economics like which industry you are in is very important right i think warren buffett once said if you put in a, a good manager in a bad industry the reputation of the industry will be constant meaning the manager would suffer like if you're in a bad industry you're going to suffer no matter what right so also competition lens is important when you think of strategy, right? Like uh, what, what are the competitors? How much, how much money or they have to compete? And what is their power? How can they disrupt uh, um, our, our current company? Also focus is another aspect. Like if there is a certain singular focus, then that actually enables the company to be powerful, right? And the key importance of leadership in this face of uh, big issues that come in for different execution areas, but also strategic decisions that the leaders make is pretty important. So these areas around strategy, uh, we'll also cover in this book, but that's the introduction, right? Uh, we talked about various things on statics, dynamics, we talked about power, we talked about strategy, we talked about uh, how we can evaluate that from the lens of current uh, landscape of competing strategic decisions between these three big companies, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and we also talked about like, you know, what led to potential demise of Nokia. So I hope to uncover all of those answers by reading this book. So I'll see you in the next chapter.